When an acid-base derangement is driven by carbon dioxide, it is termed respiratory. When the process is driven by bicarbonate, it is termed metabolic. A process that leads to the accumulation of acidic ions is called an acidosis. A process that leads to the accumulation of basic ions is called an alkalosis. Acidemia occurs when the pH is less than 7.35. This results from too little bicarbonate or too much carbon dioxide. Alkalemia occurs when the pH is greater than 7.45 and results from too little carbon dioxide or too much bicarbonate. If the pH is elevated and the bicarbonate is elevated, a metabolic alkalosis is likely. Alkalosis results from loss of hydrogen ions or excess bicarbonate. Common causes of metabolic alkalosis include prolonged vomiting, hypovolemia, diuretic use, or the administration of bicarbonate. Hypokalemia, or low levels of potassium, can both cause and maintain metabolic alkalosis by shifting hydrogen ions into cells and by augmenting renal excretion of hydrogen ions. In a metabolic alkalosis, the pH can be expected to change by 0.015 for every 1 milliequivalent per liter change in the bicarbonate. The respiratory system will attempt to compensate by increasing the partial pressure of carbon dioxide by 0.7 millimeters of mercury for every one milliequivalent per liter change in the bicarbonate. However, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is unlikely to increase past 55 millimeters of mercury. If higher partial pressures of carbon dioxide levels are seen, it is likely due to respiratory muscle weakness associated with marked hypokalemia. When evaluating a metabolic acidosis, the provider must first establish the diagnosis by determining if the pH is less than 7.35 and the bicarbonate is less than 22 milliequivalents per liter. Once the diagnosis of metabolic acidosis is established, the next step is to determine whether or not an anion gap is elevated. The anion gap can be calculated using the equation listed and accounts for values of sodium, bicarbonate, and chloride. A normal anion gap ranges between 10 to 12. Providers must note that low levels of albumin can also affect the anion gap calculation, so a correction must be made for hypoalbuminemia. Determining whether the anion gap is elevated is key to determining the most likely cause of the metabolic acidosis. Disorders that lead to metabolic acidosis and an elevated anion gap can be remembered using the mnemonic mud piles. Mud piles includes methanol, uremia, diabetic ketoacidosis, peraldehyde, isoniazid, lactic acidosis, ethylene glycol, and salicylates. Knowing the most likely cause of an anion gap metabolic acidosis can help providers correct the underlying disorder and resolve the acid-base derangement. Disorders that lead to a metabolic acidosis but have a normal anion gap include renal tubular acidosis, GI loss of bicarbonate, use of carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, and exposure to other medications. Excess chloride administration, such as with normal saline, can also lead to a non-gap metabolic acidosis. When a metabolic acidosis is present, the body naturally attempts to compensate to correct the pH back to the normal range. This respiratory compensation for a metabolic acidosis occurs through an increase in minute ventilation, an increase in respiratory rate, 
and expiration of carbon dioxide. Adequate compensation can be assumed if the partial pressure of carbon dioxide decreases by 1.3 times the decrease from the normal value of bicarbonate. An easy way to estimate appropriate compensation is by looking at the last two digits of the pH. They should be the same or very similar to the value of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. If the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is higher than expected using this calculation, then there is both a metabolic and a respiratory acidosis. If the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is lower than expected, there is a metabolic acidosis and a respiratory alkalosis. Learners should know that there are many websites and smartphone applications that can assist providers with calculations and interpretations of arterial blood gases.